Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Alana and this week's video is surprise, surprise, another book review because that's pretty much all I do around here. Also, I have put myself on a spontaneous no buy for the month of September and actually will stick to it. Um, for some reason, I just do not feel like spending money on books. And there are some books that yes, I will be purchasing in, in the future, probably the near future, but the month of September or whenever this is going up, month of September, I'm not purchasing any books because sometimes you have to tell yourself, the book's not going anywhere. It'll be there when I get there <laughs> and I don't need it right now. Let's talk about this book that I'm super excited to review. <sighs> this is a book that I think that more people should read. I think it needs more hype. It is a fantastic piece of literature. And that is I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Hartman. Has, has anybody seen the Comedy Central skit? If you haven't, after this video, please go search on YouTube, Substitute Teacher. It will pop up. Substitute Teacher skit by Key and Peel. Peel, Key and Peel. Um, it ain't Jacqueline, it's Jaqueline. You know what I'm saying? So my girl Jaqueline wrote a book that I think everybody should read. And I think that it needs more hype. Let's dive into this because we have quite a bit to talk about. Because this is a thin book, but it packs a punch. And I've never read anything quite like this. Answer me with your own thoughts, if you have any. That quote, I want to use that on people in everyday life. I'm going to have to take a pin in that and put that in my, uh, in my catalog of sassy comebacks. I Who Have Never Known Men by my girl Jaqueline. It's a very unique novel of 40 women who lived caged and guarded underground. They have no memory of how they got there, but the majority of the women, so 39 of the women, do have vague recollections of their pasts. Only one woman, our narrator, who is also the youngest, has no memory at all. But she is the one who becomes the pivotal player the key to these women's escape and survival above ground it sounds dark and depressing and this book has popped up every now and then um on my instagram feed very rarely um it does have some ins it does have some reviews here or there of course you're going to see the bulk of the reviews on amazon or goodreads but still not a ton i think for how good this book actually is and it sounds depressing, but it was way more multifaceted than I ever anticipated it being. So, and I do believe that this is the type of novel that is best to go in relatively blind. And although I always make an effort to make my reviews as spoiler free as possible, this one in particular, I will be leaving out plot points completely. Uh, to focus and just purely focus on themes and what I found interesting. So uh, back to the synopsis, you already know just by reading the back of the book that they're going to somehow escape. But other than that, I'm not giving anything away. So I Who Have Never Known Men, again, centers around this young woman who has no history at all. And yet she's still able to have a story. This is really a narrative about how important stories, how important stories are to humanity and why. But human beings need to speak, otherwise they lose their humanity. Perhaps I have tried to create time through writing these pages. I begin, I fill them with words, I pile them up, and I still don't exist because nobody is reading them. But if a person comes, they will read them and I will have a time in their head. They will have my thoughts in them. The reader and I, thus mingled, will constitute something living. First of all, is that not beautifully written? Hartman can write. Whew. And this is, side note, translated from the French. Um, but this is one of those books that if I didn't know beforehand that it had been translated, I wouldn't have known. It's just the translator did a fantastic job. Is this that have a translator? One second. Who translated this? Unless, you know, there are some authors that write their own stuff. Nope, somebody translated it. My boy Nabokov, Lolita, he translated his own stuff because he couldn't be bothered. That is the bossest move 
of all time. Stories give people a voice and a space and time in which to exist. And when somebody else is able to witness your story or witness something that you've created or produced, it allows the storyteller or the creator to achieve some type of immortality through their work. This is something that Virginia Woolf actually talks about into The Lighthouse, the immortality of the artist or the, or the creator. The narrator is highly aware that she has no knowledge of the world like her companions. And in this book, we explore the idea of what it means to have a past and what it means to have no past at all. And that's not something that I don't think I've ever thought about. I don't think I've ever read a story in which there is a character that has no memory in this way. And what does it mean to have a collective memory? So we also have a character who is in the kind of on the outskirts because everybody has some type of collective memory, even if they don't remember everything. And she has nothing. She is a complete, she's, she's a completely blank slate. Collective memory is important because it does allow people to pass down knowledge and experiences to the future generations. Thus, it preserves history. It preserves identity. There is something about memory that allows people to have well-rounded existences. And again, it kind of goes back to what I said about the immortality of the creator. If there is someone around to always gaze upon your work, to gaze upon your words, to gaze upon your story, you're becoming part of this collective memory. Even if somebody's never experienced a certain thing, when somebody is sharing knowledge with you, you still get to partake in somebody else's experiences by proxy, if you will. You're living vicariously. <laughs> That's a way to sum that up. <laughs> Inevitably, with memory comes pain. Sitting, facing one another, they found courage to compare their scant memories. They tried to exhume the past in long conversations, with which groped their way around obstacles. They fought against the amnesia, which perhaps afforded relief, and against fear. I am aware that I was always different. I am probably missing a chunk of their past. I must be lacking in certain experiences to make a person fully human. So also this collective memory gives a group of people or a person cultural context that illuminates something's true meaning. So the narrator who has no name, um, I don't even know if she knows her name. <laughs> Um, you're, it's assumed that she doesn't know her name. She's a number. She was number 40. Um, the narrator has no cultural context for the things that her companions talk about. She also stumbles upon, um, some books that she has no background to be able to place these novels within a societal framework. Again, I don't consider that a spoiler because you find that out within like the first two pages that she's come across books. Um, and there's something here that should be pondered, I think, about whether a person can fully understand pieces of art and pieces of literature if they have no background understanding of what they're actually consuming. And if, if you don't understand the place and time in which that piece of art, music, literature, whatever was created. I do understand, shake, do I, sorry, this is a question. Do I understand Shakespeare's plays any better? Or the story of Don Quixote de la Mancha? Or what is going on in Dostoevsky's novels? I think not. They all speak of experiences I have not known. Again, it's not a spoiler that these women escape. It's not a spoiler that the main character comes across some, some, some books. Let's go back and rewind about this question about, um, can you really understand a piece of fiction or a piece of art or a piece of music, fill in the blank here, if you have no background understanding? I'm going to argue no, that you can't fully understand it unless you you have some knowledge, even if you've not experienced it. There's something to be said about having background information. So for example, can you really understand certain things that Dostoevsky is talking about if you don't have even a general understanding of, the, of, of what's going on in Russia at that time. Um, what's a good example? So I read a short story collection by a, a female Russian author. Last year, Tiffy was a short story, uh, short story collection published by Pushkin Press called Steadily Worded. And she's writing during the time of um, the overthrow of the Tsar's regime. 
she met Rest this care this woman this this not character this author met Rasputin, and so we're heading into the Bolsheviks, and if you know you can understand it at the general level about not having enough food and and and, and political upheaval and all this other stuff because a lot of the stuff that she's saying is coded. Um, she's kind of she she's showing you not telling you for lack of a better phrase that's also overused um but if you don't understand what happened during the bolsheviks <laughs> uh this this switch between czarist russia and bolshevik russia um there's going to be a piece of information that you're missing i think milkman by anna burns is another really good example i think that book requires a little bit of research on um what was happening in Northern Ireland at that time? Or if all just, you're going to read this book and some of it's going to seem like nonsense. Another good example is um, why so many books talk about Napoleon, especially book, the, you know, who doesn't talk about Napoleon? <laughs> um, War and Peace. Um, English authors, Victorian authors are talking about Napoleon, all this other stuff, and, and, and the Bonapartists and all this other stuff. If you have no understanding of the fear <laughs> that Napoleon was really kind of raising up in people, especially upper classes and governments, um, are you really going to understand why Napoleon was kind of like the World War II topic of that time? You know how we talk about there's so many World War II novels. Well, of course, the World War II is this massive upheaval. I don't, th- I don't think people will ever stop writing novels about World War II. This is a huge tangent. But also think of it at that time, the Napoleonic Wars. It makes sense why at that time so many authors were inserting Napoleon and using that time period in the French Revolution as a backdrop. Let's get back. <laughs> I've done... I'm done expounding. Let's talk about something else. So like I said, it's not a spoiler that these women escape their underground cage. Hartman uses this escape to shine light on the human ability to be able to adapt and innovate when there are little to no resources. So for example, these women have no clocks and the narrator has no traditional sense of how to tell time because she's not lived in a previous society. She, she has no memory of anything. So she still comes up with this very unique way to make sense of time by counting her heartbeats. And she's able to adapt and find a way to take control over time. That rekindled a spirit of rebellion in their dulled minds. We had our own time, which had nothing in common with that of those who kept us locked up. We'd rediscovered the quality of being human. Inside the bars, my strong, regular heart, fueled by youthful anger, had restored to us our own territory. We'd established an area of freedom. Time is a massive theme in this book. And I um, think that it kind of goes back to this sense of or this question that's asked really, really at the beginning of when somebody is engaging with your work or a relic of something that you've left behind, once you've established a sense of time, you know where you fit within a, within a certain space. So we're going to move on <laughs> um, because again, there's not, there's only so much that you, I can talk about with this book without giving it away. And I really think this is something that you have to dive into with the bare minimum. So the last thing I'd want to discuss is the reason for this book's title. This, if you were to look at this book and, re, and, and think, oh, there are men keeping these women underground and I who have never known men you would think it's this really angry feminist text. And I don't really think that it is. Um, because the way, let's, let's, let's hop into it. So it's, it, you, would, you could look at this title and think, oh, this is going to be, like I said, an angry feminist text. But really what this is about is the narrator is lacking a key experience. What is it like to physically know a man? 
And I think this is one of the most profound quotes in the book, and it's the shortest. (laughs) My genitals were cloaked in silence. I mean, need I say more? (laughs) Time is a question of being human. And frankly, how could I consider myself a human being? I, who have only known 39 people, and all of them women. Throughout the book, the narrator goes back to her lack of understanding of what intimately happens between a man and a woman. And she asks these questions of the other women and they never really fully give her an answer because they're like, what's the point? You're never going to (laughs) know. And I think that Hartman is making the argument that in order to have a truly human experience, one must be familiar with both sexes. You have to have experience or interactions with both male and females. Otherwise, you don't, you're not fully engaging with the human experience because you've only experienced, you've only interacted with, say, the female version, the female human being, or the, you know, let's say, let's play devil's advocate, or the male human being. Also, specifically, what is it about sexual intimacy? that adds another dimension of experience, especially within the context of this book. For a woman, she was never given the opportunity to have this experience. She was never given any background knowledge. Nobody explained to her anything about sex and what it means. So she was in a sense robbed of knowing men or even having the choice if she wanted to know a man or not. So, yes, very interesting questions in this book about existence and memory, what makes, what creates memory. You have, do you have to have other people to help shape your memory? But also, what does it mean to fully have interactions with the different genders? So, this is one of the most, if not the most unique novel I've ever written, uh, I've ever written. I've never written a novel. This is one of the most unique novels I've probably ever read. I was not expecting it to kind of, I was not expecting it to go into what it went into when I picked it up. Um, It is strange. It's a strange novel. It's haunting. It's one of those books that I think that after you read it, you won't forget it. It's very memorable because it is so different. It's beautifully written, which means it's been beautifully translated. So Hartman, Jaqueline, and her narrator, who Ross Schwartz, I think is the narrator, did a fantastic job on this on this book. I think it is a gem that more people should read. It's just stunning. It just it asks all those existential questions that I love about existence and what it means to um, have experiences with other human beings when that's been robbed from you and how do you get that experience I this this is just one of those books you just have to go and read if it if you're if you're fascinated even if it doesn't seem like something that you would normally pick up it's just I don't understand why it doesn't have more hype I really don't I still think about this book it's one of a kind I give it a four and a half out of five I look forward to rereading it it lives in my it lives in my brain rent free it does. And I am going to highly, highly recommend this book to you. Fantastic. Uh, Miss Jaqueline, I hope you don't mind me messing up her name, but you know, Key and Pill, you got to go watch that skit. Jaqueline has written another book that was inspired by Virginia Woolf's Orlando. And I've been trying to hunt that down. It's a little bit harder to get your hands on. I might have to get it shipped from abroad but I eventually think I would like to read that. Other than that, have you read this book? Have you heard of this book? Again, it's not something that I see a ton of people talking about. I feel like I've seen a little, a few more posts about it recently, but again, maybe it'll blow up (laughs) in the near future. I think it should. This book needs hype. It's crazy. Sometimes the books that get hype are overhyped and then the books that need hype live under a rock. Um, Definitely a book that's under the radar and under read go read it. If you like, if if you plan on reading this book or just comes across your radar and you're like, I want to read that now, please let me know. And if you do read it, please come back and let me know what you thought about it. Um, yeah, let's wrap this up. 
Thank you for taking the time. Why am I sitting like I'm just chilling on the couch? Um, <laughs> all relaxed. Um, thank you for watching this video. Please, if you liked this video, please like, subscribe, leave me a comment. Feel free to me, feel free to follow me on the Insta Instagrams where I get up to more bookish shenanigans. All of my bookish stuff goes live on Instagram first. And I also get up to some occasional shenanigans in my Instagram stories with funny memes because what else is the internet really for? It's for funny memes. I'm going to sign off and I will see you in the next one. Bye.